After a thorough investigation of the proposed merger between Kroger and Albertsons, taking over one year, including 19 town halls in communities across our state, feedback from over 6,100 Coloradans, review of a significant number of documents and interviews with scores of people who are concerned about this merger, we're ready to act. To that end, my office filed a lawsuit today in Denver District Court under Colorado's State Antitrust Act. We are seeking to prevent this merger from taking place and we are pursuing civil penalties and injunctive relief in connection with another violation of Colorado's antitrust law. At the outset, I want to thank everybody across our state who engaged with the Department of Law as we analyze this merger. That includes consumers, suppliers, and workers from all across the state. You can see the graphic behind me, the 19 town halls. We had a couple in Denver, so if you're counting, you'll count 18. That shaped not only my view of this merger, but provided valuable data for the case we filed today and informed my thinking about our great state. I continually left these conversations impressed by how workers at stores across Colorado cared about consumers and about suppliers and vice versa. A supplier in Delta, for example, related how after a prior merger, the buyer for local produce was moved from Colorado to national headquarters, leading to changes in buying practices that harmed local producers. A worker in Canyon City shared how she lost her job in Craig after the prior Albertson Safeway merger. And she worried it could happen again with this merger. A consumer in Montrose joked that his mom liked the worker who slices the fresh meat for her at the local Safeway more than him, and noted that the city market doesn't have fresh meat sliced. We heard so many powerful stories about the harms that this merger would bring to Colorado, to our communities, to workers, and to rural farming economies. These fears are warranted because the market for grocery stores in Colorado is already very concentrated with too little competition. And this merger would make the problem worse. With Kroger controlling roughly half of all the supermarkets in Colorado, as you can see on this graphic. We need to remember lessons from past grocery store mergers, notably the 2015 merger between Albertsons and Safeway led to closing stores, to people losing their jobs, and consumers being worse off. The harms from that merger were supposed to be addressed by a divestiture plan, but that remedy was an abject failure, with divested stores either getting sold back to Albertsons or being closed altogether. Some of the sites of closed stores, such as in Pueblo, remain empty today and are blights in those communities. I was in Pueblo yesterday, and I met Albert Madrill, who had worked for Safeway for 31 years. He told me about the closing of those stores, about workers who lost their jobs, and he urged me to challenge this merger. I heard what Albert had to say, and like people all across the state, I get it. People are really concerned about what this merger could bring. These two companies, Kroger and Albertsons, compete vigorously against one another, as outlined in the complaint we filed today. Notably, the companies monitor each other's prices their customer service, the quality of their offerings, and they respond in the marketplace. That's how competition works. As I mentioned earlier, post-merger Kroger would have the ability to raise prices, pinching consumers during a time when consumers are already concerned about the high cost they pay for the grocery store. In urban areas where consumers shop closer to home, the consolidation of Kroger and Albertsons would create significant market power that would enable the company to raise prices, reduce quality, and lessen customer service. Consumers in other parts of our state will feel this merger even more. Consider Gunnison, for example, where we had a town hall in January 
of 2023. They only have two supermarkets, a city market and a Safeway. This merger would make Kroger a monopolist in that community, the only market for over 60 miles, which means if you're in Gunnison, you'd have to drive all the way to Salida or Montrose to reach a non-Kroger store, leaving consumers at the peril of a single supply chain. The supply chains, by the way, are different from these two companies. In Kroger, they're shipping over the mountains from Denver, by contrast, safely, from Salt Lake City. One of the clearest examples of head-to-head -head competition and what is an independent violation of the antitrust laws that we challenge in court today, these two companies agreed illegally to limit competition when Kroger and City Market employees were on strike in 2020. This strike happened after the pandemic. Grocery store workers who had served on the front lines asking for a fair wage and protected health care and pension benefits went on strike. Because of this strike, Kroger was worried that Albertsons might recruit their employees. That's how a competitive market works. Employees, as well as customers, should get the benefit of competition. And in past episodes of competition, King Supers had targeted Albertsons employees offering special incentives. But as this strike was approaching, things were different because Kroger didn't want to have to compete. So they entered into what is a blatantly illegal no poach agreement with Albertsons. And they made a commitment, you can see in this email, not to hire any King Supers employees by Albertsons and vice versa. These two companies not only had a no poach agreement, but they entered into a separate non-solicitation agreement that would restrict Albertsons from soliciting Kroger's pharmacy customers. That's illegal too. This behavior, a no poach agreement, a non-solicitation agreement, is an affront to free and fair competition. And it's the opposite of what our antitrust laws require and envision. Now I recognize that Kroger and Albertsons have suggested a proposed divestiture plan that they say could address the anti-competitive impact of this merger. That's not the case. Not only is such a proposal premature, the court needs to first determine the illegality of the merger, and then we can talk about remedies, but this proposal is unpersuasive. Let's start with past divestiture plans, like the 2015 Albertson Safeway merger plan. That is a cautionary tale to us, and it gives us ample reason for skepticism here. Like that last plan, Kroger and Albertsons are asking us to trust that a much smaller and less experienced company could operate these divested stores effectively. Like last time, their request for our trust is that a transition agreement that Kroger is offering this new firm will enable them to compete in the marketplace. That agreement, however, would require on the new firm operating divested assets to rely on Kroger with regard to their pricing, to their pharmacy, to their promotions, to loyalty programs, and even their IT infrastructure. Such an agreement and the promise of what could well become a future contract dispute, which is exactly what happened in that Albertson Safeway case, it's a recipe for mischief. In closing, I want to thank our team here at the Department of Law. We had an incredible team effort. Diana Noyes led this 19 town hall tour that I mentioned. And on the legal analysis side, Arthur, Ian, Robin, Eric, Lily, Connor, Soleil, Savannah, Fernando, Jenny, and Julia did tremendous work. I thank you all. Nathan Blake, who leads our consumer protection section, and Bryn Williams, who's our first assistant attorney general for antitrust, oversaw this work very effectively, as did our chief deputy, Natalie Hanlon Lay. As we prepare for litigation, our Deputy Solicitor General Steve Kaufman will be spearheading this effort, bringing his considerable experience to bear, including his recent work on our federal antitrust suit in Washington, D.C. against Google. In short, we have very serious concerns about this merger. We are convinced it would be bad for shoppers, workers, suppliers, and farmers. We're not going to risk another failed divestiture plan, and we're going to fight hard for competition here in Colorado. Our action today honors the input of all those like Albert who took time 
to provide feedback to us and share their serious concerns. I have to add that I am also appalled that these two companies had a no poach and non-solicitation agreement that harms workers and blatantly violates their antitrust laws. That complaint against this practice, the non-poach and no solicitation, is independent of this merger. But the fact that the company entered into such agreements and thought they could get away with it underscores why competition matters to consumers, to workers, to farmers, and to our communities. It also demonstrates why it's so important that we have vigilant antitrust enforcement. I welcome your question. Yes. In the request for documents, we asked for all emails on matters of how these companies compete against one another. We worked with the FTC who had a similar request. This email that you see was produced to us and the individuals in the email are all leading executives of the two companies. The team read this email and quickly realized its significance. It is a independent violation of the antitrust laws. It is what you might call textbook definition. These two companies are the most significant direct competitors of one another. It's worth noting, there's no other company that Kroger was worried about losing its workers to or its pharmacy customers to. They were worried about Albertsons. That's why we're worried about this merger. These two companies should have to compete in the marketplace, not be allowed to merge. We believe in thorough and due process. I recognize that when many people heard about this merger, they had concerns. We were going to do all the work we needed to make sure that we had analyzed every angle of this merger. That work included the work that discovered this independent antitrust violation that we're filing a complaint on today. That work enabled us to be able to file a complaint that is very thorough as well as a motion for preliminary injunction that we are going to seek to stop this merger. The way our legal system works is it puts the burden on us to make the case to the court that the merger is illegal. We needed the time to do what was very significant work. But more than that, it was important to me that we hear from communities across our state. Unlike any other antitrust case I may ever work on, this one hits people in the pocketbook close to where they live in a way they understand. And by going to 19 communities, we give them a chance to be heard as well. merger would affect the smaller communities as opposed to like Denver, Colorado Springs, Pueblo, Grand Junction. Can you get a little, can you give a little bit more details of that? This community that we're focused on is not just one community. It's all of our communities. I do believe that Pueblo, to take the example from my discussion with Albert yesterday, would be affected by this merger. Pueblo was affected by the last merger of Alberts and Safeway. Pueblo may be less affected, however, to your question, than Gunnison. Smaller communities like Gunnison, like Cortez, are ones that are especially nervous. And one point I'd love to get to, which gets to part of why they're nervous, is this supply chain question. Resilience is a value to small communities that they have resilience with multiple supply chains. When I went to Gunnison, I heard firsthand, County Commissioner Liz Smith was there, about when there's no eggs in the city market there, the Kroger store, people will go to the Safeway store. And they have different supply chains for eggs, for milk, for fresh pr produce. Those communities would see a consolidation of supply chains in a way that, to your point, will be harder for them to deal with than other communities. But I want to be clear, we believe Urban areas like Pueblo are nervous about this merger, and for good reason. They were harmed by the last merger. They would be harmed by this one, too. This is the second state lawsuit, is that correct? And I guess what kind of impact do you expect these lawsuits to have on, you know, as the federal regulators look at this? 
Washington State has filed a lawsuit. I don't believe they've yet sought a preliminary injunction, so I believe we're the first state to seek a preliminary injunction of a merger. Our complaint is very well done. The team did an extraordinary job. I believe it is extremely convincing and will convince a court. To your question, I believe it will also help convince the Federal Trade Commission, which is reviewing this merger. The Federal Trade Commission can challenge this merger on a nationwide basis. That is a challenge that I urge them to make. It is up to them to decide what to do. I believe when they read our complaint, it will provide a further basis for them to do just that. Are you worried about any downstream impacts? I know this is going to be expensive for both of these companies now. Despite this huge consumer first in that way, are any of these companies are going to be fighting? The worst thing that can happen to consumers in Colorado would be for this merger to happen. The fact that the companies may choose to fight it in court is up to them. They get that opportunity under the law. We will make our case. We are confident in the merits of our case and believe it will prevent this merger from happening. Well, do you talk about how the merger purchase agreement impacts the consumer here? There are two separate agreements that we're challenging in addition to the merger. The first is a no poach agreement which restricted the ability of the companies to hire away employees from one another. Employees not having the freedom of movement that the antitrust laws guarantee not only affects employees who lose the chance to compete for their labor, but it affects consumers because consumers want to get the best customer service possible when the companies know that they're each trying to hire the best possible employees to provide better customer service, that matters to customers too. The second agreement was a non-solicitation agreement that was focused on customers, pharmacy customers. During a strike, someone may not want to cross a picket line, that they would be a prime customer to be recruited by the other store. How employees are treated is a dimension of competition that could have been used to the advantage of Albertsons. Kroger and they decided, no, we're not going to compete. We're going to instead agree with one another to protect ourselves. That's not allowed by the antitrust laws. Yes. So, uh, no. I was just wondering um, when I've talked to the union most recently, they mentioned in 2015 when Albertsons acquired Safeway and then they had the divestor turn and Hagen came in and um, took over some stores. They said that there was, I guess, what would be a no poach agreement that employees at the Hagen stores could not be hired for a couple of years by, um, say, Safeway stores or Kroger, ha uh, not Kroger, Safeway stores. Have you heard, did you hear anything about that or did you run into any evidence of that? I don't know the specifics around that agreement that would, might have been part of the divestiture plan sure. that um, could potentially be an issue in a divestiture plan that was part of this case. Um, if there is, we'll analyze it. We're really concerned about how workers could be affected adversely by this merger or by other agreements. Part of what is important about this case is that we're protecting not only consumers, not only suppliers, but also workers. And this merger adversely affects all three sets of individuals. Any final questions? Yes. Hi, Ross. So thank you very much for speaking. Uh, I want to ask a little bit about what you call the third party case that was brought here against the Safeway Pharmacy Board. Um, what is the story there? This case will be assigned to a Denver District Court judge who, in all likelihood, will set a date for what will be a hearing on whether or not to issue a preliminary injunction of the merger. Those determinations in antitrust litigation are often the whole ball game. Parties, of course, could continue to litigate a full trial on the merits after a preliminary injunction. That tends to be not the rule. Sometimes parties will appeal a preliminary injunction to an appellate court. Colorado courts have yet to see litigation of this kind. Um, I previously brought a challenge to a merger that was settled and so it wasn't litigated. This merger, unless the parties walk away from it, is going to be litigated in the first instance in the Denver District Court. As was noted, the parties could be litigating in other fora as well, State of Washington, 
a federal case brought by the FTC, who knows what else. The timing question, which I think is part of what you're getting to, is at this point undetermined because you could have three separate uh, forums all litigating this same case. You have obviously the companies needing to decide are they going to stay and fight or will they potentially think they see the handwriting of the wall? That's up to them. And then when this will all come to resolution is at this point anyone's guess because we have a certain amount of control. We're going to do what we can to put the best case on to win at the preliminary injunction level and then either a full trial or an appeal. We'll be ready for either. Yes, a number of state attorneys generals and I have continued to talk about this merger, exchanging ideas and concerns. Uh, the attorney general in Arizona, as well as Nevada, had town halls, having observed and talked to me about the ones we did and found them helpful as well. The Washington attorney general and us talked. They filed their lawsuit. We will continue to work collaboratively with them, with other states, and with the Federal Trade Commission to the best of our ability. The fact that these two companies only chose to enter into a no poach agreement with one another speaks volumes. The fact that Kroger, after this merger, could be 50% of the supermarket um, market share in Colorado is a very clear flashing red light. And the fact that the last merger between Safeway and Albertsons itself had real harms to communities, to workers, and to consumers, and to producers also speaks volumes. All those facts, to me, create a considerable burden for the companies to meet. I gave them a full chance to make their case as to how this merger could help consumers, could help workers, could help our communities, and I was utterly not convinced. Do you expect other state lawsuits? I don't know what to expect. I will say it is unique in this merger having two state lawsuits in addition to the Federal Trade Commission. I don't know how often that has happened. Um, this is a potentially novel case to generate, in, in addition to the Federal Trade Commission's action, independent state lawsuits as well. Lawrence? 